So hello there, follow Kronatus Munneri, this box we had a male to female since around 7 months here. Uh, we already checked it, we found some traces of larvae but we have a real big block of white rotten wood in here. So let's see whether we find something here. And um, that first thing is to take out this block of course. Yeah. Now we see a lot of uh, centipedes here, millipedes. Oh look, I think I thought I see something in this hole here. It's a whole tunnel going down there in the hardwood of the oak here, but this is difficult to open, so you better leave this as it is. And it's also difficult to see whether we can, whether there is a larvae down there or not. But mostly, we could, if we could open, I would guess we see something here, because also these tunnels here on the side, they look like uh, they went into this block also these holes here yeah but we can't do anything at the moment so let's see what is in the rest of the in the rest of the substrate here then we can be whether we find Something. At the moment, I don't see anything here. Oh, yeah, here, yeah, look, this is a beautiful peak. This is a beautiful peak. Larva of Phalacornatus milleri, and I'm just showing you what I have prepared for it. This is a kimchi bottle. Uh, it was filled with sawdust, then inoculated from the top with uh, mycelium of Pleurotus pulmonaris, and then, then it takes around one year. This is from the from 2013, so this is already two years old or more. Uh, it goes through the whole substrate, and then you can just, if you want to put in a larva like this, you just open it on the top, then make a hole like this in the middle, so you can compress it a little bit, like this, and then you put this beautiful larva in here, and that's it. And for, and of course you have to close it again. The top material here, this is mostly just uh, the flesh of the mushroom, so this you have to remove because if this starts rotting it has not only a bad smell, it also emits some toxic gases that can, can harm your uh, larva. So that's the cover of it. You can cut two or three of the, like this and then you just Put this whole thing over it, like this, and fix it with a tape. You can leave it open here at the top, especially then when you think it's a little bit too wet, the substrate. It's good to have a good aeration here so that it can dry a little bit and of course it needs a temperature of 25. Uh, degrees to grow well, but I'm sure this uh, larva here, she will be very happy about this uh, kimchi uh, bottle. Now let's go down 
to the bottom of this box here. Probably find one more. So the others, larvae, they must be in the wood block here. So you don't, of course, remove the or throw it away. This block. But keep it. But keep it. Yeah. And then suddenly, probably in half an year, you see that there are some nice follow Crognatus mulleris on top of this box. But of course you don't have to forget to, to go and have a look what happens. Yeah, I had a question some days ago of somebody who have uh, watched my video about uh, Lamprima Adolfina. He was asking uh, why they look so uh, similar, Falocognatus mulleri and Lamprima. That's because the species are closely related to each other. And um, here you see, on this picture you see Falocognatus mulleri um, with these typical upward shaped mandibles and it's um, very similar to this picture here this is Lamprima adolfine, a male and of course the females they don't look very similar the female is in Lamprima is mostly black blue uh, pretty small and uh, for local not as many the females look uh, same from the color but they don't have mandibles so both of these species are very very well known in the beetle breeder scene if you see these pictures you know why thanks for watching